Dare, the Galactic Princess <laughs> of Music, <laughs> quite a title, and her charming husband, Eric Guerra, who's the Galactic Viceroy of Wine. Nice, you got it. And so what better combination can we have than wine and music? And of course, I have George Christie, my sidekick, yeah. who is uh, the owner of Wine Industry Network. Yeah. I want a new title though now. Because yeah, the their, their titles are way better than. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that. Galactic Princess of Music is taken. Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah, that's pretty good. The Viceroy, that's pretty. I don't know, man. That's pretty pretty good stuff. Yeah, it's pretty powerful. Either. Well, it's it's been what I was been working in wineries for 20 years, and it's always been about you know, can I get to vice president? Can I get to senior vice president? <laughs> So when we started our own company, I'm like, can I think of the goofiest title <laughs> ever just to imagine? And so we came up with Galactic Viceroy of Wine, because I like it. It's galactical, you know, it's worldwide and universe, and, you know, it's about wine. Well, so. you're, it, it means you're managing a little empire Oh, as yeah. Well. Oh, so, yeah. So, uh, yeah. Tell, tell us, everybody, about your background in wine. Oh, well, geez. So, uh, so I've been in wine for about 20 years now. I met George. Many, many years ago, one of the well, wineries that we were managing, uh, we were both working in, called Allied Demec, little. The little right? tiny company. Um, sure. And, you know, so I got actually, I was in high tech in uh, the East Bay and, and in startups. And when I got out of that, I wanted to go do something that I love to do instead of something that I had to do the rest of my life. And Kettle Jackson gave me my first job as a brand manager in their marketing department. and. Everybody knows here that Kendall Jackson is not only awesome, but it also owns many wineries, yeah. and you could learn a ton of things. You could learn small wineries, big wineries, and so I basically, my first job was drinking from the wine fire hose. It was learning everything about wine, vineyards and wineries around the world and everything, so it was a brilliant first job to have to really get the training wheels off. And we've, I've never left it. It's been the greatest thing I've ever done in my life, working well, in, in wine companies. in the industry, that is yeah. the, definitely the way to start. Yeah. And it is a fabulous company. Yeah, I'm a big is. fan. Okay. Um, actually, let's make sure we're enjoying yes. the wine. Thank you. I've been talking and I've been sitting over there going, my wine is right over there. Uh, so. Cheers. Cheers, everybody. Cheers. Cheers, Cheers everybody. Cheers. Well, we should be doing, right? Cheers, Cheers yeah. George. Cheers. Cheers. Oh. Woo! <laughs> and we're also streaming live on Mindy's pages here and uh, on Facebook. So hi to everybody, all our members, all our fans. Cheers, everybody. Healdsburg, California, right here. House. Eric, tell me, I, I can't remember the story, but you, you tell a story about when you were telling your mom that you were going into the wine industry. Oh, yeah, yeah. Tell that story. <laughs> well, actually, you know, and this this small story has even gotten better since I've met my the love of my life and my, my wife, now wife, you know, two years. So Mindy grew up in playing music, you know, and I'll let you tell that story, of course. Her dad was a musician, and so she was basically, you know, ingrained in it from a kid. She went to a really serious college, which she just became inducted into the uh, alumni hall there at Berkeley School of Music in, in, Ber in Boston. Not, not the That's Berkeley. Not the Berkeley. Here, here. Yes. Berkeley in Boston. Yeah. So she should be a musician. She went through all that. So when I got into wine, I went to San Diego State University. So when I got into wine, my mom goes, well, that makes sense, Eric. And I'm like, well, what are you talking about? She's like, this is really all you did in college, so at least you can make money at it now. And I think it was, you know, it's at Long Island Moms. So I think it was a compliment. To this day, I'm not really sure. 20 years later, she's like, sure, if you think it's a compliment, then go ahead with that. Like, yeah, you know? Well, I'm not surprised. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Yeah, it was, a little, it was a little, yeah, Brooklyn mom. It was what you did in college. I mean, right. you know, but I you, want... you grew up. You know, with your dad being a musician and bass, and actually playing for James Brown at one point as well. My yeah, my dad was always yeah rocking. It looked like a really fun thing to do. So why not play music? Yeah, did it you, makes all the sense in the world. So do you grew up watching your dad play? I did. Yeah, I was fabulous. Yeah, I was basically born, and they whisked me from the hospital to the to a band concert. truck. <laughs> <laughs> you were a roadie when you were a baby. So yeah, I mean, all my baby pictures were in yeah. hotels or on the like, road, and packing a band truck. Cases. You know, I'm like this yeah. tall. She's uh, riding a like a tricycle in a, a parking lot of a Vegas hotel. You know, it's it's really cute. Yeah. But Dad had a blast. I mean, I looked at my dad playing saxophone, and he was that guy. You know, he was shaking and shimmying and is knocking his knees together. He was walking the bar and. I don't know when school band started when I was eight years old. I, I was like, yeah, that's bring it on, let's go have fun. Yeah, and never looked back. You know, I want to mention this wine. It is lovely. Thank you. It is rosé season. It's it was 
88 degrees in Healdsburg today, I believe. But oh, yeah. This is the perfect summer wine. Yep. What I really like about it is it, it has some viscosity. Yeah. Like, this would be a fabulous wine with food. Yeah. Yes. And it is called Flower Child, correct? Yeah. I love that. Oh, thank you. We came up with that, that, that image, and we, we found this wine. We're negotiants, our little wine company called Reserve Tastings. And, and, and negotiant means that, that they are procuring the best wine they can possibly right. find and putting blends together, and, um, you know, it's a, it's a very sophisticated way to make wine. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so we find really awesome people that make really great wine. <laughs> But we, you know, rosés can go from really bad to kind of bad to okay bad to really good. <laughs> so we went through, I don't know, 20, 25 rosés to find this one. And it's a, it's a little winery. We're not allowed to mention the names or anything like that uh, in, you know, southern Sonoma. And they had some extra fruit and they had some extra wine. And this is, it's beautiful. It really is fantastic. You know, this topic has come up on the show before where uh, there are a lot of very famous vineyards and wineries that have excess fruit and mm -hmm. so you're, they, they don't let you, yeah. of course, explain it. But um, yeah. And the, my last question about this wine is this is a brand new re release, correct? You just actually this week. Yeah, just this week. Um, and it's a private membership. So for our, our team to get it, for people to get it, they usually join our membership at Reserve Tastings. But one cool thing is what we do with, with Mindy's career is that she creates all the label artwork, or we have famous artists that do it as well. We have rock artists. Um, and so all the artwork on the labels is music related and uh, original. Original paintings, original drawings, whatever it is. Well, it's, it's a lovely label and a beautiful wine. And again, it's Reserve Tastings is the name of your company. Yep. Where people can actually get the wine. Yep. Yeah. Do yeah, you yeah. have anything to express about this rosé? Mindy, in, in <laughs> musically? She, she, she drinks a lot of it, so. Look, I've drank a lot of it, yeah. yeah. <laughs> she is definitely an expert, so you know, you, so. quality control? <laughs> yes, yeah, you, you oh, could yeah. say that, oh, yeah. yeah. I think yeah. I have 15 jobs, yeah, yeah. And, and 14 of those are quality control. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know, it, it, it's fun uh, to be in business together as a couple, you know, it's like we've, we've had fun being who we are and not changing that. Yeah. And he has spent his life running wineries and, and being a part of huge wineries. And I've spent my life making music. So when we started Reserve Tastings, it was wine and music. So he goes and finds these amazing wines because you guys, you know, you guys all know where all that cool stuff is. I don't. But you guys talk in the geeky wine terms, and I love that. But I don't. I think in music terms. So when I look at a wine, and taste a wine, I think of it as a musician would. So I look at it and go, you know, oh my God, this is this beautiful feminine wine, but yet it's it's still got body and it's, it's got character, you know? So to me, I, I was born in the summer of love, uh, you know, 1969, baby. Oh, yeah. And I was a total, you know, I was a total kid, and, hippie. You and know. your pictures of her dad, we don't have, we'll, we'll show some later, but I mean, <laughs> we're talking like the bell bottoms and the big mutton chops oh, yeah. coming oh, down here. Awesome. And he was skinny too. He was like a 110 pound, six foot guy, you know. I, it was just a huge yeah. part of my childhood. He looked 70s, man. With, was this music. 60s. And so for this rose, I just thought it, yeah. it had this this life to it, this beauty to it, it breathed, it, you know, it's, it's the, you know, it's, it's that thing. So we called it Flower Child, we put the flowers it's on delicious. it, the playlist that I curated for it, it's all, you know, music of the 60, late 60s and early 70s, and it's all just that feel good, kind of, you know, dance around in uh, loose clothes and have fun. So I think of it in music terms. So did you all meet at a wine event or a music event? Oh, or neither. Us? Oh, geez. Uh, oh, uh, <laughs> he's a, a very Blind famous, Dave. one of Mindy's good friends and, and, and musician friends, but Dave Cause. Uh, uh, he's, I was making wine for him. He had his own wine brand at Whole Foods. And uh, the Whole Foods president asked me, like, hey, listen, I'd like you to make this wine a little bit better, you know, to redo the label. So I was working at a winery that we do private labels anyway. So I made his wine for him, and he hooked me up with her on a blind date. Oh, that's good. Yeah. That's, yeah, the, that's we, the compressed story. I think we story. have some photos. It's called Eric and Mindy. Oh. Oh. Well, <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Oh, there it is. Oh. All right. Come on now. <laughs> <laughs> that's classic. That ain't cool. 
<laughs> you took to play to the... Hey, I took those photos. <laughs> yeah, nice. nice. Oh, I love that. It's a fun Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Look at that. Young. Look at that. We don't even know what we're into no, at still, that you point. You look exactly the same. <laughs> that's in a very famous studio. That one with us uh, up against the records. That's called the Village Studios in Los Angeles. I mean, every famous musician went through there. Oh, oh come on. Really? Superhero. <laughs> really Halloween uh, costumes. <laughs> Who's, who's running the technical here? I got, I got a word. These are great. You know what? We have fun together. Wine and music is pretty darn fun. Those are fabulous. Uh, I yeah. love those. George, were you behind any of those pictures, man? I wish I was. I would have put the Harley in there. When you're on yeah, the Harley. That was yeah. A, yeah, I like yes. that one, man. So, Ben, you said you curate like uh, you do. You curate a bunch of songs around each release. Every uh, we come out with two wines, uh, two unique wines four times a year. So uh -huh. we ship to our members four times a year. So it's up to us to find those wines and then to, to brand them with something music centric. Um, a lot of times, you know, I'll come up with the artwork, but we've had some super cool artists come up yeah. with it. But the music, every wine that we do, uh, like here's a great example. We had this, you know, amazing, amazing Pinot Noir. And for me, it, it had this meat to it, you know, but it was, it was velvety and it was beautiful and it had this kind of glamour to it. For me, when I drank this wine, I wanted to hear soul music. Right. You know, it like it had this just incredible grit to it, but with this beauty on the finish. And you know, people like Sam Cooke or you know Aretha Franklin or Ray Charles, Charles, they've got that grit yeah. and there's something to it, you know. But then there's this beauty. So I I think obviously in music terms. So the whole playlist was just all of that you know stacks and it's 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 awesome i love the way you you express yourself because it reminds me and eric i'm sure you you, you can relate to this and i know you can Susie. that you speak the same way about like the wine and the music the same exactly the way winemakers go oh this yeah. vineyard you should exactly. have seen it it was unbelievable <laughs> yeah. and the sun was coming and you're like moving like this and so i could it's, i could see how this yeah. comes together i remember when uh, eric you were telling me about this idea this concept and yeah. And I was like, no one's at, no one's done anything quite like yeah. what you guys are doing. It's very unique, right? Which is hard to be yeah. unique these days. Yeah. Um, tell tell um, Susie's audience a little bit more about Reserve Tastes, like how that how the program works and how you can join. And yeah. I know you're always doing something Facebook Live, and now you're doing a wine country tour. So tell people a little bit about that. Yes. It's awesome. So uh, yeah, I mean, so it's it's a pairing wine and music, basically, both her and I. And so I could chase her around the world and go on tour with her. It's just yeah. a master plan. You know? <laughs> um, but it's it's not just wine, too. We have uh, festivals. And then, you know, we have a festival in Florida once a year that is a wine and music, jazz and wine festival. And we're looking to put together a few others. But also we have adventures where we go around the world and we bring a small group with us. So, for example, in June, we're coming in to Healdsburg here, to uh, everybody's backyard. And we're gonna have 30 people with us and staying at a luxury hotel and just going to wineries and doing so restaurants you, you every day. So you organize these trips for people. Yeah. And so are the yeah. is it for uh, people in your wine club? It's for anybody who wants to sign up, but our wine club gets first dibs. Right. But yeah. My and uh, sign me up. Yeah. <laughs> well, in, tu in Tuscany in November. So, uh, and then every year we'll go someplace different. Rioja. We'll go to Auckland and we'll go to Santa Barbara. We'll come back here. So it's more of a lifestyle. It's not just about the wine. It's about going to shows, drinking a lot of wine, and of course, you know, going to see Mindy play with these big festivals and, and everything else. So it's it's really more of a, of a of a lifestyle than it is just a little wine company. Well, and to George's point, what's super cool about it is that it's it's organically unique. Like it's yeah. not unique because you thought, oh, you know, it'd be a great idea. Like it's. Like it's you were back in the marketing do. department yeah. going. Got an idea, exactly. had an idea. Music yeah. and wine. Well, you know, it's like it's real. It's you come up, you yeah. know, you've, you've been in the business for such, for such a long time. Susie, for for all of Mindy's fans and our fans out there, Susie is a legend in Healdsburg, a legend in Sonoma in terms of her wines, and we want to introduce her wines <laughs> to everybody stay around here. Long yeah, right. um, and I lived in Healdsburg for a long time, and she's, she's there, you know, if you don't know Susie Selby Winery, you got to come by Selby Winery here in Healdsburg. Look it up online. But uh, yeah, we come up with all kinds of goofy label ideas like gorilla this and tree that and flying bird. I'm like, nothing's authentic, but this is authentic to us. Yeah. To, yeah. to your point, this is real to us. We could get behind this and, and speak passionately about it. So, well, yeah, it's like if we're drinking a bottle of wine at home yeah. or, or wherever in the world we happen to be, 
I'm constantly pairing music with it. Oh, come on, let's put on this, yeah. or you know, let's put on some Dave Matthews with this. It it feels the wine just feels like it's got this thing, you know. And we figured if we like to do that, other people would. So you yeah, know, it's a lot of. People I'm glad like. other people have liked to do <laughs> it. It's you good. know, I'd say it's very consistent with, with what the whole buzz marketing buzzword these days uh, uh, around wine is all about the experience, right? Experiential yeah. marketing, right? And yeah. so that's taking it to a whole nother level, right? Yeah. It's like. We've all yeah. done the tour, and they're great, right? Go in the barrel room, and you go in the vineyard, and you do yeah, this. But yeah. now you layer on the music on top of that. It's like, whoa, well, wow. it's um, that's you experience. Can experience the passion. Yeah, you yeah. know, because your yeah. passion combines so synergistic. Yeah. yeah, very cool. Yeah. Well, no, he just keeps me drunk, so it's super easy <laughs> to just, you know. It's like. As we know, right? We all have a lot of wine in our it's house. Stockholm so syndrome. Just, I, I need a. Syndrome. It's a minimum of fifty cases in my house. I mean, we have like furniture <laughs> built out of cases of wine. You know. We no, but we, we should do that. That'd be awesome, right? What furniture <laughs> built out of? Yeah. Oh my god. So uh, yeah, and that, that's true. Just keep her drunk most of the time. <laughs> sure, why not? You know, it's rock not and roll. Woo. <laughs> so. Um, can I have a little bit more of the rosé? Yes, right? so just, yeah. so yeah, just a little bit more. I like our, I like our wine. That's the other thing too. Is I work for a lot of wineries. We don't always like all the wine that we make, or or uh, you know. So this is. I'll take a little more. Yeah, I'll take a little more. Well, yeah. I'm the, the, <laughs> nice. I'm yeah. a little pouring music. <laughs> well, and of course, if you if you're not selling it, you want to drink it. Absolutely. So the backup plan. Well, that's the beauty about the wine business too, Love right? That. Is that you know, if, you, if you're into anything, any other business, if you can't sell software, you know, what are you going to do with it? Can't sell wine. <laughs> We drink, it. We drink it. it. Ship it into the house and start drinking it. So, uh, so you got to like it. You got to make sure you like it. So. I don't think we're going to have a problem selling this one. <laughs> no, this is delicious. It's just yeah, how many yeah. cases did you make? Oh, uh, that? Only 75 cases. It's that 75. tiny. Wow. Oh, people it's only that need tiny. to get on it yep, with that this tiny. one. That's the thing with our membership. It's very tiny. It just comes and goes then. It comes, comes and goes. goes. We want to sell out yeah. within months, and that's yeah. kind of the goal. Yeah. So you find special lots, and then, yeah. And sometimes they're already in bottle, most of them. Uh, sometimes they're in tank and put them in bottle, but you know whatever, whatever. But we want to taste the finished wine. We really don't want to be in the winemaking process. Right. Um, we're more of the if it's finished and we love it, then we'll take a little chunk and, and do it on our. We've had Napa Chardonnays. We've had a Howl Mountain Cab that's coming out soon. We had an Oakville Cab that we just sold out of. So yeah, we've been able to find some oh, really special things. Howl Mountain Cab, that's a fun. I know. Thing Only ten cases leave. of that, and that's going to be launched ten in fall. Cases. Ten that's cases. It? Wow. Yeah. But so a portion of that goes to a charity organization. So every wine, and it's a Music Cares, which is a, a very uh, special foundation for Mindy and, and the Grammy, uh, the recording cabinet. Yeah, we choose so. a couple wines a year that aren't our normal club shipment that are super high end. And we'll yeah. give a portion of the proceeds to Music Cares, which is the... Uh, the outreach, the charitable outreach of the Recording Academy that puts on the Grammys. And yeah. so I was a national trustee for the, the Recording Academy for many years. So it's it's close to my heart. So anything we can do that, that helps out, you yeah. know, musicians, they don't have 401ks and, you right. know, insurance plans, group insurance or any of that. So just to have a safety net for musicians, I, I think it's great. If we can sell wine and keep people happy, keep people drinking through a... Uh, the pandemic and beyond yeah. um, yes. and give money to a great cause that we know it's helping out good people making good music that's that's making the planet better and you yeah. guys probably you guys probably meet a lot of people but you know the one thing i've found really interesting being in, in you know uh with mindy and then meeting all these famous musicians how many musicians are into wine you know, you got yeah. the musicians that rocked a little too hard early on, and maybe they don't drink anymore. But how many musicians are not just wine people, but they're like wine geeks? Like we're hearing, yeah. you know, basketball oh, yeah. people now are yeah. and everything. Um, but some of these musicians are over the top wine collectors. That's absolutely true. Isn't it true? I mean, and it's really, really great. And they get it. it. Is. They really get I, it. I remember you know? being excited when I found out ZZ Top was drinking my Chardonnay. Oh, you did? <laughs> no, 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 that? I mean, oh. saying it was the first time I thought, well, how musicians. You don't really picture music, musicians, but yeah, they, they're extremely passionate so about wine. We met Billy Gibbons one time, and he could not be the coolest dude <laughs> you've ever met in your life. He, you know, ZZ Top guy, right? Yeah. Just I'm like thinking, you would expect, right? Like, the coolest guy, wore his glasses. Oh, and by the way, what did he do? He, he showed us one thing. He didn't show us pictures of his kids and everything. He pulled out his phone and showed us a picture of the famous ZZ Top car in the 80s videos. Yeah. He owns it. He says there's a bunch of them, but he owns the original. Well, I asked he him because, you, you know, know, he's got so many cars that, yeah. you know, speaking of things he collects and loves, whatever, right, right. he did a whole thing at the Peterson Auto Museum in Los Angeles. I mean, it was 
floors and floors of, of his cars. His cars, yeah. and they were all just souped up. So I had to, you know, I know it's not the usual girl thing to do, but I was like, let's talk about your cars. <laughs> this is so cool. So when you're there with me, we're going to oh, yeah. let's talk about <laughs> wine. <laughs> That's pretty awesome that he loves your wine. That's really great. That's no, super it's, cool. It's just fun. Well, and there are a lot of winemakers who are completely into music. You know, Bob Cabral collects guitars. Oh, does he really? Yes, he does. Wow. He has a guitar collection, and there are just a, a lot of... Actually, I think most of the winemakers I know really love music. Yeah. So, yeah. and you know, I'm in this just band. <laughs> you play. My, my, well, I'm the drummer. I'm, 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 I should be the backup, but I'm actually the primary. My backup does most of the playing. Yeah. And my sister, who's here, is the saxophone player. I know. That's right. And famous Michael Deloche is our lead singer. So it's, it's a fun little <laughs> band. Do you have a band name? Yes, for vertical flight. Very nice. Oh, get it? I get it. Yeah. No, I, I wanted, awesome. I've got to ask this. Are you the first female uh, saxophone player to ever get a Grammy? I've not won a okay, Grammy. to be nominated for a Grammy. Uh, uh, I don't know. I don't I know. That's a great are. question. I don't... I have no idea. Through. You know what? There are a few of us out there doing our things, you well, know? It's just... Yeah. You always notice female... Musicians when they're doing something that's they're traditionally doing awesome. male. Yep. I like just love that. Carlos Santana's now wife uh, was a drummer for Lenny Kravitz. Now she's uh, in Carlos's band. I forget her. Yeah. I forget her name. Cindy Blackman. Cindy Blackman she's is a amazing. badass drummer. Yeah, and she's so amazing. Yeah, she's outstanding. So it is. Yeah, it is great when you see women musicians that typically I love more than you know watching the men. <laughs> well, I just think it's funny because because when. We met, we were talking just about, you know, are there a bunch of women in wine? Are there a bunch of women in music? And I, there, I think that it's just nice to know each other and be together. And I always uplift, you know, the women that I find because, no, it's not the, the usual thing. And so I always think that it's, it's fun to kind of stick together and cheer each other on, Absolutely. you know, and do our thing. And, uh, you know, yep. you, you have to. No, I, I know we also have some uh, footage on you, Mindy, and I, I believe you're is this, playing. Oh, here, is this look your, at that. This is your How life? beautiful you are. Ah, for your yeah, she looked good then. Fabulous. A little, uh, yeah, yeah, a little Grammy night. Ah, there's Seattle. the band. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we were at Jazz Alley in Seattle. Oh, I love yeah. that. It's rocking. rocking out. Oh, that's <laughs> party at, at our house. Yeah, I think it's, it's, that was my birthday. Yeah. yeah. Before COVID, we used to have you know awesome birthday parties at our house that you guys have to come down to. It's yeah. just awesome. So yeah. Th yeah. this past year had to be tough for you, right? I mean, as a musician, right? You're like just put it in park and like sit tight. I mean, yeah. I know you did a lot of stuff online, you know. So I watched a bunch of like on the front porch or the back porch, yeah, yeah. yeah. which is. So cool. Yeah. It was one I saw the other day. It was so great with the, the two girls that were up there with you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Katie Gillen and the drive. Oh my god, yeah. that was awesome. Unbelievable. It's basically talent. all Whoa. girl blues band, and just you know sitting on my porch and just rocking out. Oh yeah. my god. The neighbors were you know kind of hanging over the fence. I so think about the neighbors sometimes. Like, oh, they're, oh, yeah. not, they're not just letting it rip, man. Well, so I guess the neighbors are cool with it too. I don't Hollywood know. is very loud, so just to, to add something beautiful underneath all the, the helicopters and everything is not a bad thing. <laughs> actually, yeah. But yeah, I mean, to, but they do hear it. To yeah. speak to your question, look, I I was in the studio recording a new record when all of this happened and the world was shutting down, and we were all in just you know this beautiful space of making music and, and uh who's one of the backup singers <laughs> all right all right <laughs> yeah steve perry is uh, oh my god he was yeah. in the studio when we were <laughs> so nice. little bay area he love wasn't, right he wasn't there. planned wow. he just floated in well no he and, wasn't yeah no 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 he's i didn't hire he's him he's retired you yeah. can't hire him you can't you pay can't him to yeah. sing he doesn't Does he drink wine he doesn't no, no. I yeah. think he probably drank enough early on to yeah, make yeah, up as many of my friends that, you know, it, it bums him out that we're so all, many of my friends have stopped drinking. We're all still catching drinking. up to him, I think. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, but he just came in and hung out, and, and he ended up singing on a couple songs, and it's just, it's That's him. Fabulous. He's so cool. Right? All right, so, he's sorry, you were saying though, about, the, about your tour schedule he's last incredible. year. Yeah, but now yeah. you're back, you start, so yeah. big stall, but now you're, you're starting, you're, you were in Florida, right? Like what? Yeah, nothing happened for a year. We basically, you know, had everything poof, disappear. But uh, 
the world is starting up again. I mean, thank goodness that people drank through the pandemic because <laughs> we started our <laughs> wine and Tell music business right yeah, before right? the pandemic, right. and people drank and kept oh, yeah. us going. Whereas in music, you know, I was pretty much chained to a. Uh, I know it's like raining yeah, flowers. Know, it's it's awesome, yeah, by yeah, the way. Yeah, this is great. great. It's, yeah. Yeah. it's flower child. It's raining <laughs> flowers. <laughs> So yeah, the world is coming back, and we're drinking well, and, and playing music and now. By the way, we are all vaccinated. Yep. As yes. As we sit here without our masks. Yep. It's a, all vaccinated. Yep. We're so fortunate to be in this yes. wonderful country where feels we have great. access and everything else. It yeah. feels great. And but, but yes, your timing yeah. on wine was perfect. People, yeah. people were cooking and enjoying wine, and I honestly think an appreciation level for wine, is, and especially a brand like yours, was bigger. It wasn't just about alcohol consumption. It was yeah. about enjoying what you're having. And did getting, you did yeah. you find that through your wine as well? I mean, I, I was shocked, Eric, when we sent out our first wine club shipment. I thought I assumed that fifty percent would drop out, or right. was, and it it increased. Yeah, it's so crazy. People would call and say, "Can I add two cases?" I'm like, "Are you sure?" About this? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you should be spending this much on wine. Yeah. No, no. And everybody, you know, learned that there was still there was a lot of people that bought wine online, but there was a whole group of people that never did that, and they learned that they could, yeah. Yeah. and how easy we make it for them, and and how easy it is to buy wine right from the winery, right off your webpage. So that I think was the greatest thing for the wine industry over the last year, that we're all connecting in new ways, and that people feel yeah. like they don't have to come to Hillsburg to buy your wine; they actually can buy it, you know, and, and send it home. Exactly. So, yeah. You know, it, and it, you're right. It's changed people's buying habits. I'm sure you've seen yeah. that. Yeah, but you know what? We do want them to come, still come to Hillsburg. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. So please course. come. Yes. No, but you know what? You're right. It's like it's just cute. people's comfort level with. It kind of reminds me of like when you first got like the ATM card. People are like, I don't know about that. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just going to the bank. Dude's you're like, okay. Dude is you know, dating online. himself right now. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah. Online banking. I remember banks. when Kid and Play came out. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I got to pick fun. Hey, pick man, you know what? It's but it's the world is changing. You know, yeah, in yeah, some yeah. ways, it's, it's taking a few steps in the right direction. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, and I think um, um, I just think in general, think of the things we we appreciate just being here together. Yeah. I mean, it, it's it's fabulous. Yeah. Cheers to that. We weren't able to do those things. Yeah. So, sorry. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I was gonna. I'll play around with it. Like, <laughs> I just started hugging people again. Yes. Yeah, we were just Does talking it about feel it. Good? It feels great. Yeah, I gave Eric the biggest hug. Well, it's just me. I know. I did. I haven't. I haven't I'm hugged. different. I'm your wife. Yeah, I know. You're right? supposed to hug. But me. other than the kids and and your significant others, yeah, we started hugging people too. We just had that discussion the other day. Yeah, it was funny. We yeah. the migraine. We used to with the start with the back the elbow. Yeah. Yeah. Remember then. If you were brave, you do a fist bump, you know? And, you uh, for and for a while, it was up. the air elbow. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just the air elbow or the air hug. It's well, crazy to even think we spent a year doing that, over a year. Over. Amazing. Yeah, we have another fabulous wine of yours. What? That I'm very excited to try. With an awesome label. Awesome Oof. label. That one took, that one took a lot out of us. Soul. Yes. Now, now, tell us about this as I pour it. So, so this is Monterey Pinot Noir, and again, like like rosés, we find that you know you uh, everybody out there probably knows us or wine lovers that there you know there's some wines like Cabs and Zinfandels. You can find degrees of good, excellent, not so great, but you can find degrees in the middle. But there's a few varietals we found like the rosé, but like Pinot Noir. To us, it's, there's two camps, two very sophisticated wine geeky camps of Pinot Noir. Really good. Or really bad. I know. <laughs> <laughs> really? That's it. So it yeah, doesn't have it. the same sliding scale. No, as no. To, it's, it's, to me, Mindy, it's a cliff. It's a, yeah, it's a cliff. <laughs> it's a cliff. I can see it in Mindy's face when we try it. It's either like, uh, like she does, the, you know, the Don Corleone, uh, or no, 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 no. So this Pinot is a very special. No, next. Next. Yeah. So this is a very special 2019 Pinot Noir. This is uh, from Monterey County, San Lucia Highlands. Santa Lucia Highlands. Um, as you guys know, it's kind of like the filet mignon of Monterey. Unfiltered, earthy, it's got all that mushroom in it, but also that bright fruit, all that kind of earthiness. And it's something that I know Mindy loves. Uh, she loves the style of Pinot Noir, so I'm it's perfect. In. Uh, now forget about the wine notes. Look at the label. Yeah. The label is like all those 45s that you bought, that yeah. you, you love, that, you know, it's like you, you uh, so I don't know. Cool, you just look back and it brings it all back. And the music, the playlist for this, 
is killer. It's, you know, it's Sam Cooke, it's Booker T and the MGs, yeah, it's yeah. all the this, this cool stacks. Um, I, I like the, uh, the label, it's great. I love the uh, embossing on the it. The ridges, yeah. You can feel it. Uh, can yeah, I play a little Sam Cooke? Yeah. Just give a little, oh, you yeah. know, a little Set the mood, man. music. Set the mood. Okay. Feel the piano. Drink. Drink it in. <laughs> Drink it in. And <laughs> know that this is a little uh, soul music. A little Sam Cooke. Right. Never heard anyone, right? Take us away. to your left a little bit. Lean to my left a little bit? Yeah, look at the camera. <laughs> Yay! Hi. There you go. <laughs> the, nice people like, want, the nice people want to uh, see you. Okay. <laughs> talking about Steve Perry and that was if you listen to Sam Cooke getting music geeky and then you listen to a Steve Perry you know journey song it, it, they're, they're they could be brothers and that's how Steve got his voice really through Sam Cooke is what he told us you know well I don't know what he told us he got it from Sam Cooke but I had to ask him I'm like oh, you listen to Sam he Cooke said. I mean do you ask those those questions of your winemaker friends you know like how did you get the inspiration for that or who did you Look up to. I had to ask that question of Steve Perry. Well, it's a good bad, right? <laughs> right. I ask those questions. You know, honestly, I, I promise you, I'm not humoring you right now. This um, this Pino has a lot of depth and layers, and it really is reflective of the music you're playing. Most yeah. most Pinos are not this. It's substantial, but it it still has varietal integrity. Yeah. I mean, you can tell it's Pinot, but it's yeah. it's it's bigger. Yeah, yeah. Nice. and the, it's got a lot of body to it. It's unfiltered, as you can kind of tell a little bit by looking through the glass there. And so it, got, it has a little bit more of that grit to it and that body to it. But that's why we love it. We love Pinots that have a little bit more more there there. I, I love it. like more full body Pinot for yeah. me. That's the way to go, right? There's just so many thin. Yeah, excuses out there, but to me this that is excuses. like. Oh. <laughs> he just I says know. it doesn't even go. I may have one of those thin excuses, Mister. Yeah. Well, that's what I love about George. You growing up in New Jersey, man, tells it like it is. Yeah, right. Right. Think about what I say after I say. <laughs> and then, then us Jersey guys have to usually apologize the next morning. So, uh, yeah. Like, did I really say that? I got to call George up and tell apologize. Be like, hey, no offense, but like, yeah. okay, nothing good comes out of that. I swear, it's the Viva La Soul talking. <laughs> yeah. But if we're not offending people, that means we don't love them. I mean, so you know. But, you know, I would also say about this Pinot that this is the uh, this is the cool style right now too. I mean, this is yep. what this is what people want. Yeah, the kind of the bigger, richer Pinot style. Yeah, you think so, richer, huh? Definitely. Uh, I would like to say definitely. that we planned that, but that just happened. Yeah. Oh no, it's it's. No, we beautiful. like that, so that's oh, what we're you. gonna. Yeah. Go oh, after. oh, that's right, because you have to drink it. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, if this is going to be an R wine club, yeah, yeah. we're going to have it around the we house. It's it, got to yeah. be something we love. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know. <laughs> what, yeah. what other um, current wines do you have? Just out of curiosity, what varietals? Uh, so we have, uh, well, we just sold out of a whole bunch, but we have, oh, we have a San Inez Valley Viognier, and you guys know, right? And a lot of people around the, around the country, you find those few people that love Viognier that know it, but most people, you know, it's a sweet wine that they'll buy it. Publix or Kroger or whatever, high-end, really fine-level Viognier's are unbelievable, right? They're not sweet, they're dry, but they have that brightness to them, that white flower, that beauty to them, that pie, whatever it is, honey. So we have a San Inez Valley Viognier, we call it Notes, because of all the beautiful nice. notes in it, yes. right? Like yeah. Um, and yeah, we, we have, paired it with, uh, with a bunch of Baroque music. Oh, a bunch of Baroque so music. So the playlist oh, is yeah, yeah. locked, yes. and well, you'd appreciate that because you play piano, and yeah. I saw in there you've got some Baroque music on the piano. Yeah, Baroque music. <laughs> you creeping around Susie's house? Yeah. Yes, I am. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. Um, and then we have a really fantastic Dry Creek Zinvendel, 
But we called it the theory of joy, and we, we don't have the bottle here, but if you go on our website and see it, the label is a, note, is a, is a poem, if you will, a note from Mindy and I to our club members. And it's all about the theory of joy, that we make all this beautiful wine, we make all this beautiful music, and then the people out there buy and listen, buy the wine, listen to the music, and it becomes full circle that we just feed off of each other, and that's the theory of joy, that we get joy because of what we do, and then they get joy because they get to drink our wine and listen to our music. It so, seemed like the pandemic yeah. thing to do, because you're sitting home realizing that Wow, we all need each other so much. So yeah. yeah, we kind of had to write a love letter to our our club members, and we did it right hey, on the label. Art is That's cool. sometimes is words. Cool. Art yeah. is lettering, you know. And so it, we we and, set it on the on the thing. And the playlist was what like? Uh, oh, it's like. <laughs> yes. well, uh, I like Q&A that way. It's <laughs> and the label. <laughs> so it's all songs of joy and. Uh, we used ZZ Top. We did yeah. Thank You. Yeah, which, we did. You know, yeah, it's it an old Sam and Dave song, but we loved ZZ Top's version. But uh, I think you're going to know this one. All right, go ahead. <laughs> You know, again, for all the people that are on Mindy's, you know, social media pages right now and our wine company's social social media pages, please come. What's your um, URL, uh, your website? Oh, Selby Winery. Selbywinery.com. I can attest for this. I've been drinking her wine for a long, long time, and she's been, she, and I don't want to embarrass you, she's a legend in Sonoma, and if not in wine business, so please go to Susie's site and, and buy her wine, please. Oh, that's kind of you. You're and welcome. drink. <laughs> your your reserve tasting reserve tastings wine dot com just oh, reserve tastings dot com. com yep got it yep so yeah you know what I love about your club model is and listen wineries have their own wine clubs and it's great but it's like you kind of get the 2017s in the 2018s in you get this and so yeah you know you guys are really uh, as part of the experience, it's like you're turning people on to different varietals yeah. that they might not have had. Like the Vignette. Yeah. Exactly. We had so many people come to us and say, I didn't know I loved Vignette. Exa regions, right. different regions that yeah. they may have. Hey, Pino I, I, from Monterey, Pino yeah. from Carneros. Yeah, yeah. That's well, very cool. Yeah. And even like two of the regions, two of the regions you've discussed, yeah. uh, Howl Mountain Cabernet yeah. and Cabernet Sauvignon and Dry Creek Zinfandel. Yeah. Like I don't say very often, but you pretty much can't go wrong. With those varietals in those regions, no. yeah. and I mean they're just spectacular. Right. Those regions were made for those varietals, so I love that you're you have the regional yeah. focus. Yeah, we're 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 definitely trying to hold to the you know the what each region is known and beautiful for. You know we're we're, we're not about kind of beating down the bushes on something great. And our and our rosé, as you guys know, Sonoma Coast, right. which Sonoma Coast to me is one of the probably the most brilliant. Uh, Appalachians in the world, it's huge, but you know, the, the certain parts of it and where that comes from, down by the Petaluma Gap, which is where you know a lot of the cool, a lot cooler than it is here, but not that far of a drive. Right. It's just a brilliant place to grow a Pinot Noir for a rose, that brightness that we love in, in the lighter white wines. Look, he never gets so. a second glass on there. Oh, <laughs> he never drinks that at home. He never drinks it at home. <laughs> I've seen George do some crazy George never has a second glass of coffee. Well. Listen, we're friends, we so I'm going to keep same. it. I'm going to keep it public, you know. So. <laughs> oh, so. Yeah. <laughs> well, um, yeah, and so that's that's what, and we have a Rutherford Sauvignon Blanc coming out in the fall, and, and it's just been amazing that we've been able to find these wines at the highest level 
of winemaking artistry that, that we really truly want to showcase because the winemakers that we choose these wines from we can't talk about them they're kind of unknown if you will and uh and well, but we no, still want to they're very trust well them. known as but the situation is some is. are and some and some are just struggling winemakers that made a great wine and can't sell it because we, nobody knows who they are yeah. so yeah. um so we're here to help them didn't you, didn't you write a book on that? How to market wine? Yeah, well, I wrote a book on it. That's right. So, yeah. Eric, tell, 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 tell everybody about the He wrote a book. Yeah, yeah I wrote a book. I, I got bored one, one six month period that I was uh, off, and I, I wrote he a book. You became a hermit. And, uh, and just. When, it's called When Great Wine Is Not Enough. So I've managed so many big and small wineries where, you know, people start a winery with, uh, you know, there's a lot of people that maybe come into the business and they'll spend a lot of money on a winery, they'll spend a lot of money on. On a winemaker, you know, an extraordinaire, and they won't build it. spend a lot of money on people like us. Yeah, build a castle, yeah, yeah, build a, castle yeah. build a moat, whatever it is. <laughs> uh, but you know, the, but they they don't hire a marketing and salesperson. This is kind of geeky business, sorry. Um, but you know, I always I say that you know, in the beginning, <laughs> when you build a wine brand, and if it's a negotiant wine brand, it doesn't have to be a winery. Um, it could be anything, but when you build a winery or a wine brand, hire a marketing and salesperson with the winemaker. You know, a famous winemaker, if you're into that or not, whatever it is, hire a sales and marketing person well before you sell the first bottle. Well, yes. How many people do yes. we know that make amazing wine and nobody knows who they are? Right, because it can't sell the bottle. No, they never think about that. And people and people really don't think about it when they get in the wine industry. They don't think about it. how hard it is I, to sell wine. I was a wine. salesperson who yep. learned how to make yep. wine, which is the best way to do it. Yeah. So I, you know, that's why I'm still in business. <laughs> <laughs> you were in sales. You, you learned to survive oh, before you made yes. the wine. Yeah. And not to sell wine necessarily, but sales yeah. is sales. But it, so, so your book. Um, it's unbelievably hard. Is it? Is it something available for people? Yeah, it's on Amazon okay. uh, and, and available the around the world. It's called uh, When Great Wine Is Not Enough. Yeah. I love that title. When, when Great Wine that. Is Not Enough. Because, it's not. again, we've, it's we've not. sit around as wine people and have incredible bottles, and we look at it and go, I never heard of this damn winery before. <laughs> Where is this from? And yeah. we know every corner of every acre. So uh, it's in an effort to help the wineries around the world, really. I mean, Amazon's brilliant with that. It's been translated into whatever it is, 20 languages, and sold around the world. And I love that. I see Italian winemakers and Spanish winemakers that bought my little book to let me learn, you know, that you got to focus on this side of things as much as oh, the wine. I'd say more so. Maybe more so nowadays. Maybe more so. Because there's a lot of really great wine out there. Yeah. And you have to have people love you uh, as much as the wine. Was uh, it translated into different languages? Yeah. Amazon does that oh, for you. Wow. It's, we, all live in so Jeff, we all live in Jeff Be Bezos' world, don't we? So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It gets translated for you in all those languages. Yeah. Well, we use, you know, yeah. we with Wine Industry Network. We put on conferences, and oh, yeah. whenever I can get Eric to come and moderate, or you know, get in front of our audience, like he's my go-to guy, right? Because you can't shut me the hell up. No, he's good. I tell, <laughs> so I tell you a funny story. When I first met Eric, uh, he it was actually I was working for for Jim Beam. They had a wine division. Eric was with Ally Domecq. And then we were coming together for our first national sales meeting together, you know? Yeah, that's right. And we didn't know each other at that point. Yeah. And uh, I was managing um, one of the brands, uh, Wild Horse was one of my, that was a brand manager. Oh, Wild and, Mon Monterey, right? Uh, uh, down in um, Atascadero, near Paso Robles. Right, Paso, and, Paso um, sorry, okay. And uh, this guy, Eric Guerra, right? Now, they said, this guy's from Jersey too, you're gonna love him. I'm like, oh, okay, we'll see, I uh, probably will. But it will be unfortunate Jersey. if so, it's uh, not a good Jersey so we all, Yeah, yeah, so we all have to do like our presentations in front of this combined uh, meeting. And, oh man, and, uh, I, so I, I was, you know, I was kind of like, I felt pretty like, decent about going up on stage, you yeah. know, and I go up and, uh, and I think I have to go, oh, they, they, they come out and uh, uh, Eric has to go before me, right? So I'm like, okay, it's cool, I get to check out like the guy that's gonna go. And, uh, I want to see what I'm dealing with here, right? Because I'm a very competitive. Yeah, person, yeah. Right? Like, yeah, so, yeah, so he was speaking right before. So he, he goes up and present. He's managing. Uh, he a was mom, the opening mom act. Napa. Yeah, it was and he goes up on stage, and it was yeah. just like, you know, he was just like pumping up the crowd. He's <laughs> yeah. like, hey, Tony Robbins, right? just like he is yeah. right there. Tony yeah. Robbins, <laughs> just like he is right now. And I was like, <laughs> then, then all every bit of conference I had left just oh, just get out of here, just basically laid out the way. And I said, I'm like. Hi, I'm, uh, my name is George Christie. I'm the brand manager for Wild Horse. Oh, very nice. All right, so I know this guy crushed me. It was unbelievable. It was not true. I know this is rated G right, right now, but that's, my that's bullshit. You know, obviously he's very successful for a reason, but uh, it really was intimidating. I was like, 
this you guy's manage Mom Napa, it's hard not to get excited. That is sparkling wine, right? I mean, sparkling wine is unbelievable. So if you do a good sparkling wine like Mom did and Guy DeVoe did back in the 80s and he created that Rutherford little winery, that, you got to get excited about okay, that. Okay, just as a wife, I'm going to say, it's so sexy to have a guy talk about champagne. <laughs> I know I'm married to him. I've been with him almost 10 years. He's very sexy. Super I'm, sexy I'm to have a to guy him. be like, I'm champagne is amazing. Take, take note, ladies. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so take note. Be, be older, wiser, we're marry married, a wine man. guy. We're married, we're married. Especially a wine guy who loves champagne. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> Well, oh, thank you, man. And that was the one thing that I love talking about wine. I just think it's the most brilliant thing in the world, and I'll never retire. You know, people ask us, "She'll never retire." We don't. We don't. We're, we're not working. What is retirement? We're not working. Mean? This is, this just is our living. lives. Yeah. 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 That's you guys so, are great together. No, oh, thank you. Very I know. Passionate, thank right? you They're very. I know. We have fun. It's like the perfect storm. And, yeah. And you've created a passionate product. Oh yeah. Taste the passion. Yeah. Well. Yeah. And it's like this little town of Healdsburg, you know. I mean, it's it's just a little culture of of people like you guys. It's what we love about it. It's excellence at the highest level: wine, food, people, architecture, art, raining flowers, raining flowers, raining <laughs> flowers. <laughs> but it is as beautiful as everybody believes it to be. It really is. When people come to wine country and come to Selby, you just you're like, oh, this is great. It's even better. I mean, our business is hard. You get lost in it. But that 1% that you're on stage like this, drinking this wine, it just makes everything right. And I can't believe that we do this for a living. How many, I can't believe. How many, I, I just was thinking about your background. How many different wines, like how many bottles of wine in your career do you think you've tasted? Have you ever thought about that? It must oh. be thousands. Well, we've, I, I've actually counted how many I've been part of selling, which has been close to 30 million cases at this point. But taste it, I, I guess, I don't know, like thousands? thousands? So yeah. my, my point is, as a negotiant brand, you've got to have an amazing palate. Uh, well, yeah, and, she and, actually and you have, but you have I the trust breadth him. of experience yeah. with all these different... Well, that's a really good, interesting thing. I didn't until I worked as a, you know, more of a negotiant. When you work for a winery, we taste all our own wines all the time. Yeah. Right, and you figure out how to sell it as opposed to yeah. yeah. But you're tasting your same vineyards, you're tasting your same wines, and when you work for a company that's got a bigger breadth to it, yeah, we, we go well. Well, for our little wine company, we go through 300 wines a year to pay to, to choose only eight. Yeah. Only it's eight. really quite a job. Only you taste. I'm three. sure your samples pumping yeah. in all the time, right? I mean, yeah, but we only go after the ones that are the highest end ones, yeah. you know, because you can get bulk samples and all that right. stuff. But we go after the highest end ones. Yeah. We have and fun. Yeah. You, you mentioned a Healdsburg tour. Early? Yes. Yeah. What What do you mean by that exactly? Why don't you take that because... Uh, I'll take that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'm like, I'll take that. Sure. Okay, so we decided we love to travel. Uh, you know, I tour all the time. And we wanted to take people we loved and see the world and kind of see it through the glasses of wine and food and music. Right? We don't, we, we don't want to go somewhere and drink Coors Light. We want to go somewhere and drink great wine and go someplace where we can learn something and go someplace beautiful. But or we want to experience it with some friends. I'll have plenty of the elder, though, something like that. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Well, a little yeah. Russian River Brewing Company. But That's not yeah. Coors Light. No, no, yeah. I just want to wander off the path. A yeah, bit. a little bit, right. <laughs> you know. We'll indulge. So we decided to create our own. Like, I created my own uh, festival uh, down in Punta Gorda, Florida, because... I wanted to curate the music. I wanted to get artists I loved that I believed in. Yeah. And I didn't want to drink crappy beer and wine. I didn't want a $5 <laughs> glass of wine. That is not the festival I would create. Yeah. So when we got together and thought, okay, if we could create, we called it an adventure, where we could go with 30 or 40 people that we think are awesome, that we could go drink great wine, introduce them to amazing food, amazing experiences. I could play for them every night. Um, our first thought was Healdsburg. Yeah. And literally, it nice. felt like a year away until now it's a month away. Yeah. So we're oh, doing it exciting. June 6th through 10th, and we're gonna come to Healdsburg. Right now we have 30 people booked. Yeah. And we're gonna stay at H2, and he has literally put together this incredible itinerary going to different wineries. Some of them are friends of ours. Some of them aren't. Um, one of them is Ciani. One George of them is Ciani. Yeah, yeah. yeah, George, you're a partner. Uh, we've got 
uh, Randy Ullum coming in um, oh, nice. from Kendall Jackson yes, to yeah. do a special tasting with us. We've it's, uh, it's we, friends. we blackmailed Goldschmidt to do something for us. Nick Goldschmidt, <laughs> right? Nick. Nice. Oh, nice. famous multi-continent <laughs> winemaker. Yep. Absolutely. That we know is a great beer, He's beer so drinker. He's so shy though. Shameless. Yep. yep. Very. <laughs> He's very shy. We're gonna have to bring him out of the show. Yeah. 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 But we yeah. can share his world of wine and our friends and, and these wines and this amazing town and just have fun with friends for five days and experience it all together. What a great ex excuse to kind of get together and just overdo it for five days with the food and wine and music. It's, it's, just, it's a big ruse just for us to go really cool places with a lot of people. We're and doing it in Tuscany as well in November. We're going to so. be in Siena, Tuscany and going out to Montepulciano one day, Montalcino one day. A pair of cheese uh, farm. And we're going to a, a Pecorino farm that's one day. Right. So yeah, so that sounds good. So that's, that's the whole you know idea there. Anyway, so it's going to be awesome. Have it's more fun, right? So, so should people, if they want to learn more about these trips, uh, should they go to your website at Reserve Tasting? Yep, we've got two websites. So Reserve Tastings, Tastings is the wine I'm company. So sorry, S on the end. Reserve That's it. Tastings. Yep, Reserve Tastings. You just type that in, you know, uh, it'll come up in Google and MindyAbear.com as well. And my ND. I-A-B-A-I-R.com. Yep. And just so go to Adventures or, or Wine. Or Wine and see the committee's tour schedule and everything else. So yeah, we actually got a have big shows. tour schedule coming up. Oh my yeah. gosh, we're playing shows in front of real people. And on yeah. Facebook, you, you, Still you, you guys go, always have something going on on Facebook, right? Yeah. So it's like, which is great. Always got people coming over to my porch to yeah, play. Porch, so. I love well, that. the other night, so we have right. Tuesday shows on Facebook. And uh, if you want to be one of the great amount of people that come in and see us, we had Bill Champlin on the other night, which you guys know from Chicago, and he played, he sang in some of the greatest love ballads of all time, in A Hard Habit to Break, oh, yeah. and um, he's just yeah. a brilliant guy. So we have people like that that just stop by and play on the porch with Mindy. Yeah, Ellis Hall from Tower of Power, sang with Tower of Power for yeah. seven years, and well, yeah. yeah. You must Dave have Pye's. a lot of friends in the hood who are in the industry, correct? <laughs> well, that is, you know, Hollywood's kind of crazy right now. It, it's kind of become this nutty place during the pandemic it's not serene and you know peaceful <laughs> and raining flowers like heels <laughs> yeah. but there are amazing musicians there and and so oh. many friends that you know I can kind of call and Thank say you. hey do you want to come over to the porch I I know someone who can pour you some great wine yeah, yeah. and you know we'll take care of you and let's just play a few songs together so no one said no yet we've had, uh, <laughs> we've had 40 five shows and a couple yeah. of them one of them went over well over a hundred thousand people came in it was just unbelievable so it was with dave yeah. cause the yeah. jazz musician well so. the, the guy who introduced us you know yes. you got to have him over to the porch oh, yes. 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 he married us on our porch so yes, he's ordained and yeah 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 yeah, yeah. 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 Well, you got married on your porch yeah, yeah. come on it was great Sounds like quite a porch so it's small <laughs> but you know what it does the trick. So once once a year, Mindy has before the pandemic. Once a year, Mindy has this incredible birthday party. Yeah. She just drags you know 100, 150 people out, and it's all music industry people and all these incredible people. So we we just had a birthday party for Mindy, her 50th birthday party. Yeah. And uh, and in the middle of it all, we disappeared and we came back, and we had a, a pop up wedding. Nobody knew other than our family that they were going to be in the middle of a wedding. So everybody started crying almost immediately. We had you yeah. know, great musicians singing songs, and we got married amongst the people that we love. It was it was quite unbelievable. You well, know? we didn't want to look. I dress up to go on stage. I didn't yeah. want a big poofy dress, you know. And we were planning my fiftieth birthday party, and I was just like, "Come on, we're gonna have hundred and fifty people in our little, yeah. you know, backyard." let's just have fun. We'll be in t-shirts and jeans and then, yeah. you know, let's change into wedding clothes and just do it. With our closest friends, no one has to dress up. Did you we told them to just bring yeah. a did bottle of wine. Into a wedding dress? Yeah, yeah. I yeah. did. Yeah, we did. We got and it. it was not a poofy white dress. No, no, no. It was a silver awesome dress. Girlfriend doesn't wear white. <laughs> you know white went I, out the door I a long the time ago. So I'm not yeah. concerned about how that dress looked. No, a long time ago. <laughs> I mean, but, but we, had, uh, we had, I mean, name drop, we had like, 
Elvira was there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Nancy Cartwright, who's Bart Simpson on The Simpson, was there. Oh my God. Had famous, you know. We uh, have an eclectic group of friends. Yeah, musicians yeah. were there. It's uh, this this one gentleman who's named Nick Egan. He did a lot of the artwork for the Ramones and the Sex Pistols. And he's done a few wine he, labels for he's, us. He's, Look he's up creativevandal.com, and you're yes. going to see a ridiculous rock and roll art. Yeah. yeah. He's used to hang out with Warhol in New York. So I mean, it was just the coolest crowd. Yeah. And our family was there, and our daughters were there, and it was just awesome. It was awesome. And we got married before the pandemic because yeah. I feel so bad for people who, you know, hey, we're going to get married. It's going to be June 2020. And, you know, poof, everything went away. Well, so, they're, they're anyway. all catching up now. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, There's a lot of weddings going on. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. I can imagine. That is so, did your daughters know? It was a, yeah. So they knew. We told some people because we wanted them to show up. Anybody yes. has teenage daughters out there, you know, it's hard <laughs> yeah. to keep their attention span. Like, hey, it's Mindy's birthday. Sure, Dad, we'll be there. You know? Yeah. Hey, have to be better offer. They don't care about anyone turning 50, but you know, getting yeah. married, you know, yeah, that those, was that those, was enough. Those few rock and roll friends that maybe show up and sometimes don't, we told them. So they're like, all right, we'll be there. <laughs> yeah, Randy Yellow, we told because we were yeah. like, just come Randy down, there, yeah. you know, we're trust us, something cool is going to happen. He's like, <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> Mindy, I, we would love to hear something from you again. Play a little music. I would Can we do special requests? It's me. I want Metallica. No. <laughs> Keep drinking. I want to do know, a long uh, twenty-minute Dave Matthews song. And, and your your our our short audience here is not going to uh, have the opportunity to taste this Pinot. I'm so sorry. So it's super can, good. It is, oh it my is. god! I'm really missing so out. So amazing! I'm so <laughs> sorry. It sucks to be you. The couch people. Will not. <laughs> the couch people. <laughs> it's delicious. The 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 song I. I'm going to play would be better if you were drinking wine right now. Maybe you are oh, at they, home. They, they all are. I guarantee yeah, yeah. you. I know you're drinking wine, right? <laughs> yeah. Looking into each camera, we've got just a bunch of little wine. stuff. Uh, so I hope you're drinking wine. Um, but I would love to play some. This is just, uh, let me just say, this has been so fun to come over and yeah. be a part of this with you. I know I am the the uh, sole non-winemaker, non-wine, uh, you know, uh, person. person, shall we say. But You're the sole is... winemaker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I am the sole winemaker. So it, it's it's just fun to be here with you guys and, and talk wine and, and uh, drink and, and be in this beautiful setting. So thank you for having oh, us. This is super cool. Stars, is great. Believe me. Uh, so uh, let me think what to play. No. I think. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna play. Maybe I'll play a little bit of the song I want to play. Okay. And then maybe I'll play a little bit of the song you want to play. All right. You want me to play? Yes. I mean, I take requests, but I mean. I say let it rip. Don't tell me yeah. what to play. Exactly. Whatever, whatever comes don't to tell you. Me what to play? All right. Yeah. One. Oh, wait, 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 why did you just come up with that? <laughs> so one time she was. In, I'm sorry. In, she was in Chicago. We were in Chicago, and I, I just made a. What was it? I made an offhand. It was. It was during sound check, so nobody was there. Right. And I, I said to you, I'm like, hey, play Freebird, because everybody says that. Play Freebird. And she went on the mic and said, don't tell me what to play, and I won't tell you what to drink. Oh. <laughs> right? But it was joking, I think, right? No. I can't. No. You and my mom, I can't so tell you. Can't. All right. Uh, but I, you do tell me. <laughs> well, I pour it for you. Yeah, that's sure. It. <laughs> Um, I'm going to play a little bit of a song um, that, that I just think is beautiful. I grew up hearing it, and, and uh, it's a very kind of spiritual song, whether, you, whether you're religious or not. I just think it, it takes me to a beautiful place. So I'll play a, a little... It, is that a church bell when you just That's said that? That's a church bell, yes. yes. It is. You did not plan that. I didn't, and it's raining flowers. <laughs> <laughs> now we just need a fuzzy bunny to run across, right? <laughs> Are there bunnies here? Yes, <laughs> many. Uh, Teal <laughs> I know. <laughs> a million. No. All right. This is for the church bells ringing in the background. <laughs>
right on time too. It's like I was like, what is going on here, man? You guys have the most amazing show. Wow. I'll tell you what. That is awesome. production value. You guys put us to shame. Yeah. Yeah. This is this is Two church bells. Wow. Two we church bells. Yeah, right. <laughs> we have uh, sirens and stuff in Hollywood, so you know. I know, it's like UPS trucks backing up and <laughs> sirens. But I'm like, wait, they're delivering wine. I'll be right back. Yeah. Actually, that has happened, yeah. yeah. But this is uh, yeah. way more. Okay, can I play a little bit of the song he wanted me to play? Absolutely. It, imagine. So I just came out with um, the best of Mindy Bear and realized during the pandemic that I had been making records for 20 years and I had never stopped to kind of look back. So I put a few new songs on it uh, and put the hits that I've had through the years on it. And it was, uh, and a few songs that no one's ever heard that I've always kind of held on to and it's just never made a record. Um, so this particular song, uh, I recorded on alto sax, but I was just sitting in my friend's living room and it reminded me sitting out here because we were kind of, uh, you know, we're kind of sitting with friends and, and it's not a stage and it's not a studio. But this particular song I recorded with friends in, in my friend's living room and on YouTube, we just released it on YouTube. I didn't put it on a record or anything. And it's gotten, I think, uh, almost three and a half million hits. Uh, wow. Three and a half million views. That's fabulous. And so, yeah, I, thank you. I just never thought, you know, growing up in music, you were supposed to have platinum records and you were supposed to have, you know, radio hits and stuff, but that's kind of a hit. So I put it on my best of record. So, um, I don't know, you can never go wrong with John Lennon. It's a John Lennon cover. And it is raining flowers, so this is Imagine. I'll just play a little bit of it. for a living. <laughs> I'm like, wow, you're really good. I'm going to get the chance to do it for a living now that the world is coming back around. So, Well, well thank you. Well, Mindy, you are a beautiful person and a beautiful artist. You are a lovely couple. Thank so, you. Uh, Mindy A. Bear and Eric Guerra of Reserve Tastings. Yes. And thank you for being here. Yeah, it's our pleasure. And it's really an amazing experience being here. George just being a friend of mine for forever and uh, and one of my biggest fans and that's just means a lot to me and, and Susie I mean again you're for all our people out there please buy wine it's the theory of joy her wine is amazing so go to her website and buy the wine but thank you thank oh, you so much thank you cheers. thank you so much cheers. thank you cheers so cheers to everybody Thanks. out there Woo. cheers Thanks, George. Chin. Get up. cheers old man cheers <laughs> <laughs> we will be back in the courtyard. In the meantime, enjoy wine, enjoy life.